Can we go old school Brady and talk about a particular number? Yeah. 276. 276. We'll do a deep dive into some unsolved problems in number theory, if you're up for it. Pick a number. What about like eight? Eight. I'd like you to tell me it's factors. Or rather, technically it's proper factors, but all that means is it's factors or divisors, depending on where you are in the world, not including itself. One, two, and four. And we're going to add them up. Do you want to do that in your head? Yeah. <laughs> Seven. Hey. So this is a process called the aliquot process. This quot bit, other words like quote and quotient, all of which are to do with part of something. And actually, it's the first time I realised that quote like you do a quote from someone, you're telling us part of their speech. Like, and that's why the word quote has come from. But also quotient, which is a technical maths word for dividing things, like dividing into different parts. Ali, I think Latin alias, also alias, something other, when you rename something to be something else. So this is like the other parts. So the aliquot process is taking the proper factors of this number and adding them up. And you've got a number which is lower than we started with. But doing an aliquot sequence means doing it again. So you've got seven. Go again. Tell me the proper factors. And I hope you recognise this is going to be quite quick. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just got one, because we're not doing seven itself. So eight went to seven. Notice it went lower. And seven went to one. And actually, if we carried on, one has no proper factors if we're going to define that as not including itself, so you get zero. But we might as well stop there. I'm saying that if you get to one, it's kind of got boring at that point, and that's the end of our sequence. Your number that you chose, eight, got lower. And actually, that means we call eight a deficient number. And I don't know if that's a word you've come across before, it's certainly turned up on number file, but whether you remember it, like every number is either deficient or something else. And uh, do you know what else could happen if you pick its proper factors and add it up? I mean, it could, could add up to more than the number. Do you know what they call it? Like surplus? Uh... Yeah, that's a good uh, synonym for the word I'm thinking of, which is the word abundant. Abundant, that's yeah. right. I so know. numbers could be deficient, like eight, or abundant. We can try and pick an abundant number. Do you want to try and guess one? Um, the, the clue is actually a number with lots of factors. Well, let's try 24 because it is actually four factorial, but also like it's famously got lots of factors. One, one, two, uh, does three go in there? It does. Yeah, three. Four. Factors are also used to, useful to do in pairs. So if you've got two, you could probably tell me 12 because yeah. two times 12 and three times eight is 24. Four times six, there's the six I was thinking of. And I'm pretty sure we've run out. Yeah. And actually factor pairs are quite useful. You sort of have to head towards the middle. 24 would go with the one, but since we're doing proper factors, we're not gonna include it. So let's just add these up. 20, 30, six. We've found an abundant number, Brady, well done. Eight's deficient, 24's abundant. And actually let's do the aliquot sequence because this time it's gone higher. So if I take whatever answer I get and do it again, let's go 36. 36 has factors one, two, and 18. Three goes in and I think that would be 12. Four goes in and that would be a nine with it. And six is a factor as well. Pretty sure those are all the factors. Can add these up. I mean, if this needs fast forwarding, Brady, you know what to do. 30, 39, 45, 49, 52, 54. 55. Also abundant. Abundant. But I wonder if you can predict what's going to happen now, because this sequence, I just keep doing it. This is what an aliquot sequence is, and you just see what happens. So 55, uh, 1 times 55, 2, 3, no, none of those go in. Pretty sure it's 5 times 11, and I think that's it. It doesn't feel like it's going to be abundant anymore. 11 plus 5 is 16, 17, which is prime, and I think you know what happens to primes. You found one earlier, it goes to one game over here. So this one took 1, 2, 3 terms fourth terms to get to one. I'm not really too worried about, but it looks like even when you started with an abundant number, this thing eventually hits deficient and starts tracking back down to one. If it's not abundant or deficient, what else could it be? These are rhetorical questions because these are called the perfect numbers. Ah, lovely. Yeah, and so six is one of them. If you take the proper factor six, one, two, and three, you add it to get six. And if you see, if you do an aliquot sequence on a perfect number, it's never gonna get to one. Unlike the other ones we've looked at, they will stick in a loop. 28 is famously perfect. The next one is 496 and they turn up, I and mean, there's all sorts of stories we can tell why we never found an odd perfect number. I'm not getting into that as interesting as it is. What I like about these aliquot sequences is they are doing things that I already knew quite a lot about, perfect numbers, abundant, deficient. But now there's another question, which is if you keep doing this process, what could happen? Is there a number that never goes to one? Well, we've seen some that do go to one, so we know it can do that. We've also talked about some numbers which don't get to one because they're perfect. What else could happen? And I think there's some other familiar landmarks we just haven't spotted yet on the horizon. We'd have to be talking about numbers that when you sum their proper factors, go into a loop. Couldn't they just keep being abundant? Well, abundant, abundant. there's the other question. Um, could you find an aliquot sequence that doesn't converge? So let's first of all establish the, the loop thing. Famously, 220, if you add up its proper factors, you get 296. 
And if you add up the factors of 296, the proper factors, you get 220. In fact, let me just get my keys. Yeah. Uh, so I told you I want to find my, my bunch of keys. I don't at me, right? They're, they're too big, I know. But this is the number 220. Uh, this is called an amicable number because it is best friends with 296. Those two go in a loop. And if you do the aliquot sequence of either of them, you just get the other one. And this is half of a heart. Uh, it's horribly cliched romantic to say that my wife has the other half of my heart. And she has one with the number 296 on it. This is the lowest pair of amicable numbers that exist. Okay. So there, there's, the, there's the loop. What about forever? So the question is, uh, and this is now a famous piece of mathematics called the Catalan-Dixon conjecture. Do all aliquot sequences either end in one or hit a perfect number and loop or amicable numbers? And in fact, there are other cycles of what they call sociable numbers, which don't go in an amicable pair, but they go in loops. Uh, and there's a whole other branch of number theory about that. But the Catalan-Dixon conjecture is, do they all go into a loop or hit one? And this is where you stop doing it by hand because it's easy to check the low numbers and it becomes tedious to check the large numbers. So we're going to bust out some code. Okay, so what I did was program GeoGebra to take the proper factors, add them up, and then spit it back in. And all it's going to do is plot a little graph of where it goes. So what we're expecting to see is abundant numbers start with the graph going up. And anytime you see a tick up in the graph, we've found an abundant number and division will go down. Perfect, stay the same and you're kind of stuck there. So let's just do a quick check. Here is the number six. I think you know what's gonna happen. I've told it to give up after like six repeats. So if I click go on this, the number six doesn't change. It's a perfect number. Your number that you started with was eight. So let's go on eight. And we're expecting it to drop straight down. Went to seven, went to one, and it's gone to zero and stopped working. Let's try the other one you did, which is 24. And we're expecting this time to, to go up a bit, but then it comes down. So now, the, this, I love about this sort of number theory thing. This is basic maths, but we've got an infinite number of numbers to explore. And some of them are surprising. So if we do do one that we just talked about, 220, there's our amicable pair bouncing around. Let's try some other ones. I'm going to try the number 95, because I know what happens. And this has got a special name. This is called an aspiring number. Uh, and I hadn't heard that term. There's, we've got a lot of these familiar sort of friendly number words like perfect, abundant, deficient, amicable, sociable. Aspiring is one I hadn't come across, but here's one of them. So here's a number that doesn't get to one. It actually got to six. And it's stuck there. So 95 is not perfect, but it's almost there. So it's aspiring to be perfect. That's what I think why they've named it. It knows the way to perfect. It knows the way to perfect. That's a good definition of an aspiring number if you're using an aliquot sequence. And again, I was like, why have I, I heard this word? And I actually asked a bunch of respected maths, maths communicators and mathematicians. And some of them have heard it if they've done number theory. They're like, of course I've heard of it. And a bunch of us, including myself, are like, I've not heard this. And yet I know all the other numbers that come out of this little study. So I enjoyed like doing something new. So 95 is aspiring. That was a new one for me. Let's try some other numbers. I'm going to try 30. So 30, look at that. I mean, I'm sounding excited because actually you try loads of numbers and they're deficient. Most numbers are deficient and they just shoot down and end at one. 30 goes up for quite a long time. It jumps up to the number 260 and then it's all over and it sort of collapses down. But here you have a first glimpse that some numbers go quite high before they come back down. 25, what do you reckon? 25 ends up being aspiring because it goes to six straight away uh, and then it stays there. So let's try a more surprising number. Uh, you don't have to go very high to hit some surprises. I'm gonna try the number 138. If you are remembering the number I mentioned at the beginning, just hold that thought because it is connected with this. Uh, and I hope that my judge of programming skills let me get away with this. Up and up and up and up. Oh, down, oh and up. <laughs> oh. It's playing with you. Oh, it's a raw, oh, yes. Go son, go. Never stop! <laughs> oh no! 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 Oh no! It's back! It's back! I mean, I've deliberately slowed this down to give you the chance to commentate. So, well, it's, it's gone so high now we can't see any of the blips Amazing. earlier. Amazing! Oh no! It's down again. It's down. My computer is chugging away doing the calculations here. Oh no! It doesn't look good. But we saw it. Did it was looking like that before? Come on, <laughs> come on. How, how long should we watch? I mean, if it's still going, it hasn't found a perfect number. It's just that we can't see these numbers. They're so small compared to the uh, 18 billion that was up here. And at this point, it hits one. It stopped. Oh. 138 hits one. But before it gets there, it hit almost 18 billion. Hold on, let, let me check, right? So thousand 
million billion, 180 billion. Uh, so you do not want to do that calculation by hand. What a ride that was. And I, I, I enjoyed your commentary because the first time I programmed this and the fact that it went slowly enough, like if it was all over quickly, you wouldn't have seen any of those blips and you still can't see them now, right? Ben, you know what? We should start a YouTube channel <laughs> where we just pick a random number. Where we just pick numbers and then commentate the sequence. Let's do it. Like marble racing. We'll do some B-roll footage of that in a minute. <laughs> But um, the other problem is this is a nice observation about like you can't see the journey. That fun time we had is vanished in the in the weeds down here, right? Because this number is so big that these are minuscule in comparison. So this is a prime candidate for not plotting this on a linear scale. We're going to use a logarithmic scale. And I'm just going to flip over to the log scale on the screen. And what that will do is instead of plotting the number, it will plot the basically the power of 10 that that number, how many digits that number has. So I'm going to use log base 10 to plot it. And I can flip straight over to that. There is the journey we went on on a logarithmic scale. Himalayas. Yeah, and we've got this mountain range and all that commentation going on here. Like this is 180 billion. And so logarithmically, like, this is a huge difference to down here, but a log scale helps you see these things. It's a really nice example of why log scales help you see detail when there's more than a few orders of magnitude going on. But 138 did collapse eventually. So now it feels like a genuine question. Are there any that don't come back? And the answer is, we don't know. Of course not. But there are a few interesting examples. So first of all, let's hit the headline and then we can go exploring the jungle again, if you like. Um, if you double 138, you get 276, which I may have mentioned earlier. Um, I'm going to run that one on Python for reasons. If I run it on GeoGebra, uh, the thing melts, right? GeoGebra is not a good processing thing for doing heavy duty calculations. And you can imagine, like in this one, it had to factorize a number in the hundreds of billions. Now it can do it, but it's not quick. And I hope all number file viewers are aware that factoring numbers takes a long time when they get big. And that's partly why the internet is still secure, hooray. Uh, Python is better at doing this stuff, so I'm gonna run this on Python. I don't know if I could take the excitement of another one like that. <laughs> okay, some badly written Python script here. I'm actually gonna run 138 again so we can see how that looks. Here, here it comes. Right, that's it doing the number crunching that like we did on paper. That's the aliquot sequence. It reached an end, which means it's going to start animating it. And now you can see that mountain range we were commenting on is already doing a log scale, by the way, because I knew it was going to be impossible to see. And the reason this is working more efficiently is that it's done all the calculations first and it's just done a little animation for me. So I'm going to do this for 276 and you'll see why immediately I needed to do it on Python. Let's just see what happens. So here come the numbers. They're spitting out the bottom of my screen. They're getting big, right? It's given up. Uh, it's got too large for today down here. <laughs> and it gave up after 70. And already, like, we're up at... 70 10, steps. 70 steps, and it's gone beyond uh, 10 to the power 13. But it could crunch to one in, like, a step. It could. And I've gone a bit further. And so have others. And the reason I'm telling you about this one is that we have not gone far enough to know. And we've got the supercomputers involved. This has been running on people's computers for a long time. It's the first number that we genuinely don't know. Everything else up to 276 we've checked. And it's either collapsed to one or got in a loop. Uh, and we'll see some nice examples. And we've done loads of other numbers too, much higher. And a lot of them all collapse to one and go in loops. But this one, surprisingly low if you ask me, we just don't know. And we do not have the computing power to get to the end of it. And it, hey, the next step that someone calculates, you're right, it might collapse. We might hit a deficient streak. But these numbers... You could hit a perfect number. Well, you could. We don't know. Maybe this is an aspiring number. Like, maybe this one wants to be perfect and we'll get there eventually, but we don't know. The Catalan-Dixon conjecture says maybe all of them go to one or hit a perfect loop. But this is a counterexample if it doesn't. We just don't know how to check if it does because we haven't got the computing power. So here's an unsolved problem with mathematics. And what I like is this is low-hanging fruit. It's within that territory that a lot of us know about with, with recreational number theory, perfect, abundant, deficient numbers. The 276 is the first of what they call the Lema 5, uh, who was a mathematician. He found five numbers less than a thousand that we don't know about. Are they all still open? Or are... They're st all still open. So there's other numbers less than a thousand that also we don't know about, but they tap into the same sequence. So for example, if you try 306, it does some stuff, and then it slots into the same numbers that 276 does. So you end up with exactly the same graph in the same shape. So they feel like less unique, but there are a few of them. But there are five with unique patterns that are not coming down as far as we've checked under five. And they are 276, 552, 564, 660, and 966. And we just don't know. Do you want to see what some other numbers do that we do know about? 
Yeah, right. Oh, let's, let's explore the jungle a bit, because there are literally infinitely many numbers to explore, and the ones we have come across, some of them are nice. Right, first up for your consideration, I'm going to do 980460. Go, go, gadget, aliquot sequence. The numbers will spit out for us. Well, 1 divides 220, 2, 4, 5, uh, 10. What I like about this is that they missed a pair. In fact, they missed the second smallest pair of amicable numbers, and these were found 200 years later. It's never gonna hit five. What we don't know, well, at the moment, five is the only untouchable number we found, which is odd. All of the others are even. So unsolved conjecture number two of this video is five, the only odd untouchable number. 